This video shows the operation of a Service Center Metals cold saw on the Boss production line. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, which includes safety glasses, earplugs, arm protection, gloves, and steel-toed safety shoes are required when operating the cold saw. You must also have a working radio so that you can communicate with your production team. Good communication is key to maintaining safety, quality, and operational performance. Check the saw area to make sure there are no trip hazards. Be especially careful to make sure there is no oil or water on the floor. Be familiar with the standard operating procedures for the cold saw before attempting operation. Before attempting any saw cuts, make sure the foam surround, equipment guards, and the saw doors are in place. Inspect the chip tub and chip collection bags at the beginning of every shift. If they are more than halfway full, they need to be emptied. Make sure that the cold saw oil reservoir has plenty of oil. Check the main work order for all specs and notes for the order you will be cutting. You will see information like cut length, sample requirements, and front end and back end scrap cut lengths. Make sure the cold saw is on and in the power mode. After the extrusions are stretched, lower the end feed table. Use the T4 belt control to transfer the extrusions to the end feed table. Raise up the end feed table and use the conveyor to transport the extrusions to the cold saw. Align all the die stops slash weld marks upstream of the cold saw by using the alignment gauge stop. Check the extrusions for straightness, bowing, speed tears, and any other defects. Report any defects to your press operator immediately. Once at the cold saw, measure the correct back end trim length and use the exit and entrance conveyor controls to line up the extrusions to that length. After that, walk to the front of the extrusions and confirm that you have enough material for all the required cuts plus the front end trim. Any extra trim should be cut off the back end. Call the stretcher operator over the radio and have him run the conveyor forward until the extrusions are positioned to get all your required cuts and front end trim. Keep the saw blade at the correct height and speed when cutting. Refer to the standard operating procedures if you are unsure. Push the start button on the control panel to make the cut. Once you've made a cut, make sure the blade is cutting well and making clean, straight, 90 degree cuts. Use the scrap control to raise the scrap table to dump the scrap into the scrap tub. Use the scrap pusher and scrap table when removing scrap to prevent injuries. Use the conveyor to flush the extrusions against the stop gauge. After making a cut, raise the stop gauge and use the conveyor to exit the extrusions down to the pack station. Let the extrusions make contact with the robot stop gauge before lowering the table to transfer to the pack station. After the extrusions transfer to the pack station, make sure the table is up and continue the same process until the order is complete. When the order is complete, make appropriate entries in the SCM knowledge net. Run out length, scrap trim cut, and samples cut are a few of the examples of what needs to be entered for each order. Make sure to keep your hands clear of any pinch points. Always use the lockout tag when any maintenance is performed on the saw or if the saw is being cleaned out. Never recut extrusions or cut samples unless you have a minimum of 6 inches of extrusion on both sides of the clamp. This is a major safety concern and is a potential chip collection clogging issue. Mark all samples with the die number being run. Never lift any scrap that is heavy. Use a forklift or ask a team member for help. When using the crane, make sure your team members know so they can be aware and they can adjust their positions accordingly. Thanks for watching, and as always, be safe.